There are still lots of improvements that could be made to this engine, but I thought you'd like to see the progress I've made so far. Apart from repositioning the valve so they're near the piston end, and adding longer, lighter push rods, the most significant thing I've done so far was sort out the timing. These cams control the timing. As the wheel rotates, they push down on the push rods, which in turn push open the valves at the bottom. I tried a few different ones for the pressure stroke. That's when the compressed air is allowed into the cylinder. Basically, it now opens the valve when the piston has just passed bottom dead center and holds it open until it's nearly at the top dead center. I know there are lots of clever things people do with this power stroke timing, but I'm just aiming for something that works. The exhaust cam opens the other valve so the compressed air can get out of the cylinder as the piston closes up again. Very straightforward, but again, clever people do clever things with these. They delay letting the exhaust out a little, so the piston is cushioned at the end of the stroke, for instance. So I put two cams together so I could try different timings just by slackening these nuts and rotating the cams a little to alter the overlap. In a real steam locomotive, the valve timing is adjustable as the train is going along. <laughs> That's amazing. Developed by very, very clever people, they could allow less steam in once the train was up to speed, for instance. The mechanisms were complicated and it's no wonder that the drivers were called engineers because they were constantly adjusting the valves to get maximum efficiency or speed. Now I'm not worrying about efficiency at all just yet, so it's easy for me. I'm just aiming to get this thing spinning round and round. Thanks, by the way, for all of you who tried to help with the spool valve design. Lots of you told me about O-rings and carbide cord and other ways to seal the ends. That was all very interesting, but of course the problem isn't really the ends of the rod. It's here where the input and the outlet ports cross the main shaft. When the groove lines up with these holes, then the air can flow through freely. But when the shaft is blocking the way, then of course the air still wants to go out, so it goes around the shaft. Cunning, huh? And it's not very far around the shaft to the hole, just a few millimeters. Probably a wider shaft would help that, but O-rings wouldn't unless I offset the ports. Hmm. But anyway, Will has replaced the worst valve with a newly reamed one, and it's really very good. So the valve leakage is no longer the biggest problem. So let's see how it works. Bring on the revolution. Now look, that's quite exciting, isn't it? Round and round and round. It's fun, but it's not very fast and it's not very powerful, to be honest. <laughs> Using the timer in my video editor, I could see that this was spinning at 45 RPM, but I could stop it with my hand on the rim. Now, many people have told me that I need a shorter, fatter piston. But I'm not sure you're right, people. That would make the engine spin around faster, that's true, but with less torque. So I might not gain anything except more wear on everything. There is plenty of power when the air goes into the cylinder. But that's only for about one third of the rotation. After that, the flywheel only keeps spinning because of its momentum. But that 
unpowered part of the rotation is hard going because three things have to happen. The piston needs to be squashed back in against the friction of the seals inside. All the air needs to be pushed out through the exhaust valve and the valves need operating too against their return springs. All that takes lots of energy and slows down the engine. In fact, it's amazing that it keeps going at all. I decided that I could maybe help a little by making the exhaust valve opening bigger. So I opened up the groove a little. And there are lots of seals in this piston. <laughs> Obviously, they didn't really put them in there just for fun, but I removed some of them because they looked a bit superfluous to me <laughs> and just to see what difference it would make. Those two modifications should help the unpowered part of the rotation. So less energy should be needed and the engine shouldn't slow down as much. What do you think? Would it work? Here goes. And this time the RPM has gone up to a mighty 51. 51 revolutions per minute. Not bad. But can we do better? <laughs> I had to open up the inlet valve as well, didn't I? And that pushed the speed up to a terrifying 55 RPM. That's a 20% improvement with just a bit of tweaking. Now, I wonder, have we reached its tip top speed or could we, dare we, Push it further. Whoa, it's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs>